Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the online service of Redeemer Presbyterian Church. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you are welcome, by the way, tonight to our Zoom meeting at 6.30. Love to have you. Just to fill you in as to what's going on concerning uh, when we'll meet again, I just want you to know that the deacons have been putting together guidelines for us to follow when we do meet again. And the elders have met to discuss uh, when that will be and we'll be getting word to you in the near future uh, about that. So do pray for wisdom regarding that matter. This time, please listen to God's invitation to you to worship him from Isaiah 55. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Let us pray. God, thank you for the invitation to worship you. We are grateful that you have freely given us salvation in your precious son, Jesus Christ, and that in him we can have an re everlasting relationship with you. We appreciate the rich treasure of your word in which you have given us everything we need for life and godliness. We rejoice in your goodness to us. Please forgive us for our sins and strengthen our spiritual lives through this worship service. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to sing, As a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. No one has ever said of me that I suffer from a poor appetite. It's quite the opposite. My mom will tell you, if you were to talk to her, that ever since I've 
was born, a baby, an infant. Um, I've always had a strong appetite for food, and she would feed me, and I'd want more. I never had enough. And uh, that sort of continued uh, with me uh, through the years. You know, every now and then I'll look at old photos, and, and I, as I look at myself, I realize that uh, there's no doubt that I had a healthy appetite. Those photos are, are proof positive of that. The only time uh, when my appetite would wane or weaken is when I get sick. But other than that, it's strong and it's healthy. Well, the topic of the scripture passage in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, is on appetite. Not the physical appetite, but on your spiritual appetite as the children of God. Listen to what Peter says concerning that matter. He says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all slander. That therefore, by the way, connects this passage to the previous section that we looked at last week on loving one another. And of course, all these sins mentioned here in, in verse 1 are the counter opposite to loving one another. So Peter says those things need to go. And he says, like newborn infants, desire the pure milk of the word so that you may grow up into your salvation. If you have tasted that the Lord is good. When you were born again, granted spiritual life from the Father, which we talked about last week. At that point, you gained a spiritual appetite for God, for the spiritual things of God. That's when you first tasted that the Lord is indeed good. Your spiritual taste buds were made alive, and you tasted the goodness of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which was the power of God unto your salvation. At that time you tasted, no doubt, the love of God, the grace and the mercy and the kindness of God, his truthfulness, his justice. You tasted his kindness when you were forgiven of all your sins, and you were declared righteous in God's sight, given the son's righteous record as your very own. And then when you were taken out of the courtroom and brought into the living room of God's family, uh, indeed, at that time, you tasted the goodness of the Lord. And that tasting of the goodness of the Lord didn't stop there. No, no doubt you have tasted the, the goodness of the Lord along the way, along your Christian journey. Um, in your Bible reading, uh, in a sermon, in a good Christian book, in a small group where you gathered with brothers and sisters and you studied and talked about the Word, and you tasted God's goodness and in, in what you learned. It was a blessing to you. And perhaps you've even tasted the goodness of the Lord in a, in a good Christian song that reminded you of something about the character of God, his love and his kindness. Brothers and sisters, if, if you indeed have tasted that the Lord is good, God wants that to continue. He wants you to continue tasting that he is good and he is kind. And that goodness is found in his word, which Peter says here in our passage is pure milk. The word is spiritual milk, free of contamination, and free from error and lies and falsehood, anything that would lead you astray and away from God, that would damage your relationship with God. That's nowhere to be found in the word of God. It is pure, pure milk. It's pure because it comes from God, who himself is pure. And uh, God wants you to taste that. He wants you to taste the pure milk of the Word of God. He wants you to taste his goodness. 
And the reason given here is because it's essential to your spiritual growth as a child of God. It's your growth that Peter is talking about <clears throat> in our passage when he says, so that you may grow up into your salvation. <clears throat> the salvation that he's speaking of here is your future salvation, the completion of your salvation that will come when Christ returns and, and you're glorified and you become uh, fully adult and mature as Jesus Christ. What a day that will be. Well, you are to be growing toward that here and now. If that's the destination, if complete maturity in Christ is where you will arrive at one day, right now, you're to be growing up into that. It's all a part of a piece. If that's the goal, then your life is to be oriented in that direction and you are to be growing in maturity, in Christ-likeness. You know, God doesn't expect you to be perfect. That's coming. Right now, he expects you to be growing. That's a clear expectation that he has, and it's something that he wants you to um, really take a hold of and believe that he wants you to be someone, someone who is caught up with this concept of growing in the likeness of Jesus Christ. And for that to transpire, for that to take place, you need to be tasting and drinking of the milk of the Word of God. It needs to be regular. You know, just like your eating of food, your eating of your physical food is a regular thing, right? I mean, I'm sure you ate today. You've probably eaten three times by now, if not more. And I guarantee you tomorrow, when you wake up, you'll have breakfast and then lunch and then dinner. There's none of you that's going to eat tonight for the last time and not eat till next week sometime. Every day, several times a day, you eat. Well, the same kind of thing needs to happen spiritually, where you have a regular intake of the Word of God, the milk of the Word. You're bringing it in, you're consuming it, you're thinking about it, and you're making it live in your life. And that entails um, studying the Bible, reading the Bible on a regular basis, um, hearing the Word preached at church. That's why God wants you there. He wants you there to worship Him, but He wants you to hear from Him in His Word because that's how you grow. And He wants you growing. And so He wants you to gather with His people, to hear the Word preached and taught. He wants you to, to study the Bible with your brothers and sisters, perhaps in a small group where you can open up the Word and talk about it and talk about how it applies. Because when you do that, you're Together, you're tasting the goodness of the Lord as you gain insight into His Word and its meaning and its application to your life. There's a resource that I uh, came across several years ago and um, just thought about it this week as I was preparing this message. It's called One-to-One -one Bible Reading. A Simple Guide for Every Christian by David Helm and Matthias Media. <clears throat> the thrust of the book is to get God's people reading the Word and, and to do so by partnering up one person with another person. And he parcels out, you know, different portions of the Word of God from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you go to reading it individually during the week. And, um, and he gives you a very simple but sound Bible study method. And you learn that and you apply that to your passage. And you come together at a restaurant or at the church or in a home. And you then talk about the things that you learned. What about the goodness of God that you, that you learned and you tasted? And you, and you share it with one another. And you build one another up. 
Um, there are lots of different methodologies out there, but the key thing is, is you find a way to get yourself in the Word and uh, get yourself reading and meditating and uh, so that you can enjoy uh, God and, and taste His goodness. It's essential uh, to your growth, Peter says. Now, conversely, um, if there is little to no intake of the Word of God, if you're not tasting the goodness of the Lord, then your spiritual growth um, is going to be stunted. Your love for God and others will be diminished. Discernment will be lacking, so you could very well end up buying into things that are, are not right, that are false, that are detrimental to you. Um, you won't have the strength you need to resist temptation, and you'll find yourself falling into those sins that um, you struggle with because you're just not strong. Your mind hasn't been renewed. Your heart hasn't been strengthened. You haven't tasted the goodness of the Lord, which gives you the ability to say, no, I'm not going there. And you turn like Jesus did when he was being tempted by, by the evil one. He had the word in him and he used it. And it gave him the ability to defeat temptation. And that the psalmist understood just how um, the goodness of God was in the word. And, and he describes some of it here in Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. Let me read that for you. Um, the psalmist writes about the word of God. He says, the instruction of the Lord is perfect renewing one's life the testimony of the lord is trustworthy making the inexperienced wise the precepts of the lord are right making the heart glad the command of the lord is radiant making the eyes light up the fear of the lord is pure enduring forever the ordinances of the lord are reliable and altogether righteous they are more desirable than gold than an abundance of pure gold and sweeter than honey dripping from a comb, honeycomb. In addition, your servant is warned by them, and in keeping them there is an abundant reward. And some of that reward is described in what I just read. But no doubt some of that reward is the fact that you'll taste the goodness and kindness of the Lord, and that will contribute to your growth and your maturity in Christ something that God wants. And because of that, he commands you in this passage to desire the milk of the Word of God. He commands you to desire, like a newborn baby desires his mother's milk. You know, when a baby starts to drink his mother's milk, um, that desire grows strong, and, and it's frequent. And, uh, and that's how God wants you to desire him and his Word. He wants you to strongly and frequently desire the milk of his word. Now, God can command it of you, obviously, because he's God, but, but also because he's already given you the capacity as a Christian to desire him. As I said earlier in the sermon, you gain that desire and that spiritual appetite for God when God caused you to be born again, where he gave you life, spiritual life, so that you were you could desire him. And so what he's doing here is he is challenging you. And he's saying, hey, I gave you a desire for me and my word. Now I command you to utilize it and desire me. Desire my word, he says. And the neat thing as to how it works is that when you trust him and you start drinking of the word what happens when you taste the goodness of the lord your desire is stirred it's strengthened and so you want to taste more and you taste more and when you taste more your desire is stronger and on and on it goes you know this is not some kind of you know mystical pipe dream you know uh, not by any means uh, the psalmist, just a regular person like you and me, um, obviously someone serious about God, but this is what he wrote. 
about his longing for the Word of God in Psalm 119. Just a few verses here. He says, My soul is consumed with longing for your all at all times. Your statues are my delight. They are my counselors. How sweet, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. That's God's desire for you. God's desire for you is for you to long for him. Very much like the psalmist is describing his longing for God. Now, there is one thing that will weaken your desire and your craving for the word. And it's unconfessed sin. Such as the hardened relational sins that Peter mentions in verse 1. Sins like malice and deceit and hypocrisy, envy and, and slander. Those are all relational sins. As I said earlier, they're, they are counter opposite to what we're to do based on last week's passage, to love one another. This is not loving one another, right? And, um, and so if you are living here and, and, and uncon not confessing your sins and dealing with them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to weaken your desire for God and his word. So, Peter says, they need to go. You need to rid yourselves of those sins. Put them off like a, a filthy garment. Get rid of them. Say no to them. And you do that by uh, repenting. Repenting of those sins. Confessing them to God and asking him to forgive you. And when you do, he'll do that. He'll clean you up. He'll purify your heart. And then you're poised to then begin loving one another sincerely and deeply from the heart. And what will happen is that your desire for God and his word will start to increase. You know, when I think about this passage, I, th I think about my uh, daughter, Caitlin, uh, when she was born out in California. Uh, she was born with jaundice. And that meant she had to stay in the hospital for about three days. And, uh, and at the beginning, because she was jaundiced, she just really didn't have the desire to eat, to, to nurse. And of course, that was hard on my wife. Uh, but as her body got rid of the jaundice, as it left, her desire for her mother's milk returned. Her appetite returned. She desired to eat. And... Uh, and that's what will happen to you, spiritually speaking. When you deal with your sins, you confess them and, to God and he forgives you, purifies you, you'll be ready to go. That desire will, will, will return and grow for him and his word. So I ask you, what's your appetite like for God and his word? You know, based on this passage, what God wants. He wants you to have a healthy, healthy appetite for him and for his word. He wants the very best for you because the very best for you is him. And when you, when you have him and you, when, you, when you're reading his word and you're tasting that he is good, what's going to happen? You're going to grow and you're going to become like his son. And he loves his son so much, so much that he wants you to grow to become like him. So I urge you today, taste the goodness of the Lord. That's found in the word of God. So drink, taste, taste the goodness of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have loved us so much, not only in, in saving us through faith in your Son, but giving us your word so that we can taste your goodness, so that we can grow and mature as children of God, so that we can grow to become like your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our elder brother. Lord, help us, help us to discipline ourselves 
to spend time in your word, uh, tasting and seeing that you indeed are good and kind. So indeed that we will grow and become more and more like your dear son. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. The final song that we want to end our service with is somewhat of a new song for you, but it's been around a while, and it's a song by Michael W. Smith called Ancient Words. Lord bless. Oh,